Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam and this is Saturday Night Special episode 95. Alright, so I got a lot of machine work for you this, this week. We're going to be over here on the Kearney and Trekker. And I've been over here this morning actually uh, milling, getting some work done. And I've got it all captured for you and I'm going to share it on this video, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm working on the vise that my friend Will give me. Uh, back if you watched my video when I picked up the little surface grinder, he gave me a little vise. And I'm refurbishing this vise for my cousin Alex, uh, who you can find over at Alex's Garage. I'll post a link up there so that you can check him out. He, he really appreciates some, uh, some subscribers and some views and some comments over there on his channel. But I'm going to visit Alex next weekend. We're going to go up to the uh, Moultrie, Georgia swap meet and uh, spend the day up there. And I'm going to, whenever I go over there, I plan on having this vise. Uh, fixed and put back together and take it to them and, and give it to them. Okay, so uh, that's what we're working on. That's a, this week's project is this vice. So we'll get to that. I've also got some more repairs that's going to be coming up on this piece right here. So that'll probably be in um, next week's episode. We'll get to that. Uh, but uh, today's episode is going to be mainly about the moving jaw, which I got set up there in the, in the uh, K&T. Alright, so uh, I do have a couple of viewer appreciation gifts that's come in this week. We're going to share those. And I got some new tools that I've bought also this week. I had a visitor, uh, some of you might know and recognize the name, Jack Hoing uh, from up around the uh, Sydney, Ohio area. Jack is the one that actually gave me the info on my Monarch lathe. He, uh, he went by Monarch and gave him my serial number and he found out some information on my lathe. And, so me and him's been staying in touch, and he actually is, uh, I think he said he's going to uh, Fort Myers. Uh, him and his wife, they're on vacation. And they stopped in and seen Keith Rucker over there at the, uh, the uh, Georgia Agricultural Museum. And, and he actually came all the way over here to Pensacola and visited me. But he had a couple tools that I bought from him, so he wanted to drop those off and pay me a visit. And he actually uh, gave me a couple extras too some a-bomb size stuff so we got them over there and i'll pull them over on camera and we'll check them out okay so let's go ahead and get right to it and uh i want to i want to again real quick just uh say hello to all of the new subscribers uh i know a, a bunch of you guys have uh come this way from ave's channel so i, I appreciate that again and i uh, hope you i hope you enjoy what you see here and and stick around We've got a lot of different machine work that I try to share with you on, on video and always bring you some fresh projects, okay? So thanks again, guys, for all the, uh, all the new subscribers and, and to all the guys that watch me every week, watch this uh, series that, that I do. That's pretty cool. So we're going to keep it rolling. I, I really enjoy it, okay? So all right, let's get to some viewer mail. All right, so our first package this week come all the way from England. And I had to, I had to run down to the post office and pick that up. They didn't uh, drop it there in a the box, so I had to go get it. And uh, it was kind of delayed process. So uh, I've had this package for a little while now, but I'm finally getting to share it with you. So this was sent in by Neil Inser, and he is from, uh, I'm sorry, Birmingham, England. Okay, and he has a a company called Four By, Four By dot com. It's uh, I'll throw the link up there fourby.com uh, UK and he he uh, sells four-wheel drive parts so what he wanted to do was send me some left-handed drill bits right here all right and they are they are sort of like an odd size they're, they're metric drill bits like this one right here is a 10.8 millimeter so some of these may be uh, tap sizes actually tap size drill bits but they're all left hand and that's what's cool about them and they're all left handed and as we've all learned on uh, some of our past videos that uh, a left handed drill bit can be extremely handy whenever you're removing a broken bolt out of something a lot of times you can use a left handed drill bit and go down there and start cutting it and it'll actually back the screw out of the hole alright so that was very kind of Neil to send me a bunch of these I got a little bin over there that have all the left-handed drills in it, and that's where these are going to go. So, uh, thank you very much, Neil. He also sent me a couple of his business cards right here. All right, there's his there's his business. 
and I got a couple stickers. All right, so we'll we'll put one over there on the cabinet with the others. And thank you very much, Neil. All right. So I got another little package in from our friend Colton Hawk. The the last package that he sent a few weeks ago, it, it got busted in the mail and one of the cutters got lost. So he wanted to send a replacement. This is the cutter that they had in the box that wasn't in the box. Whenever I showed the viewer mail, he had, he had sent me an email asking me. And I said, no, the, uh, the roughing... The roughing mill was not in the box, so they wanted to send me another one, and that's what they've done right here. So, uh, first one I've ever had. I've never had a, a roughing mill like this. This is like a slab mill that you run on the arbor right here. It's uh, two and a half inches, and it will take, it goes on the inch and a quarter arbor. So, very cool, Colton. I appreciate that. And he's looking forward to seeing this in action on the mill. And me as well so we'll just kind of have to wait for the right job whenever we decide to do some heavy milling over there we'll, we'll definitely pull this thing out and give it a shot okay so he also sent me another picture he's very active in the sports in, in school so that's a picture of him playing football right there very cool Colton so uh, uh, thank you very much I really appreciate it man great tool for the K&T all right, so here's the new tools that I got this week, and these are the these are the ones that I bought from Jack. Uh, he brought them down here for me. He sent me an email a few weeks back and and said I've got some A-bomb size parallels you might be interested in. And whenever I seen the seen the pictures, I said, man, I got to have those things. So I uh, I struck a deal with Jack on those, and also this uh, this cool little B-block right here. That's, that's a nice V-block. It's got the uh, holes milled into it so that you can clamp it down. And it's got these nice clamps built into it so that you can hold something down. So that was a, that was a nice V-block right there. And then these parallels right here, these are pretty cool. So these are three foot, three foot, 36 inches long. And the height is uh, three and 15 sixteenths. So I already checked them, they're, uh, they're, they're 3 and 15, and the way that they're made, and they're extremely heavy, <laughs> they're, they're drilled and counterboard, so you can actually bolt these down to a T-slot and use like a cap head bolt, you know, and pull them down and then there's no uh, hardware sticking up in your way. So anyway, I had to have these things, I just thought they were totally cool. They, they wouldn't have a very practical purpose here in my shop, but I may end up taking these to work and, and I could use these on the horizontal bore mill every now and then. I do have to use a parallel once in a while on the table because I gotta get, sometimes when, when a part is real low, I have to raise it up on parallels because the spindle won't go all the way down to the table. It, it's about a six inch uh, height right there. So uh, sometimes the parallels do come in handy. So that was the, uh, the stuff I bought from Jack. And he also gave me a couple other items. We got a two and three quarter adjustable blade reamer right here. And one that's even bigger than that, we got a three inch adjustable blade reamer. And these things are still good. You can still use them. So some big boy cutters right there. Uh, these are some clamps that look like they might've been shop made. They, they do have a name on there, RJ Weiser. And the way that they, they work is that they slide into a T-slot and you have a set screw on the top. So there might be a specialty clamp for a special job where they slid them in and use the set screw on the top to hold your part down. But anyway, he had got those. There's a set of four of them right here. And he said that I could have them. He, he wanted to give them to me. And also a couple pieces of one inch tool steel right here. All right, I got one more. <laughs> One more right here. Check out that shell mill, man. That shell reamer, I mean. So, that's the biggest shell reamer I've ever seen, personally. This is a three and three quarter. And it's made in Poland. And it appears to be brand new. I don't think it's ever been used. But I don't know. I'm going to have to see if I can find me an arbor that this goes on. I do have a bunch of shell reamers down here in my box, but definitely not anything that big. So that was pretty cool of Jack to, to uh, give me those things. So Jack, it was good to see you and uh, meet you. 
And uh, thanks for the good deal on the tools, okay, man? So this is the vise that I picked up a couple weeks ago from my friend Will. Uh, he gave it to me for free. Uh, he said he didn't need it, didn't, didn't have a need for it anymore. So what I'm going to try to do is clean this thing up, basically just take it apart, bead blast it really well, and put a fresh coat of paint on it, and uh, oil the parts that need to be oiled, that kind of stuff, and try to get it in working condition and uh, give it to my cousin Alex. Uh, Alex from Alex's Garage. Uh, check out his YouTube channel there. So I've been looking for advice for him for quite a while, and I just haven't really ever found a good one. And so we're going to give this one a shot since it's free, and we've got the tools here to, to work on it. So one of the things that we will do, and I'll show that's bad, is, okay, the, uh, the jaw right here, the little insert jaw, that's missing... And I remember Will was telling me that, you know, it busted out. The screws busted out the casting right there. So this is the one pair that repair that I know I'm going to have to do to it is uh, we'll get it cleaned up. And probably what I'll do is braise these holes up, probably grind them out and uh, braise them up. And probably set the jaw up somehow and maybe really uh, re-drill and tap for a couple more uh, brand new holes. And then what we'll, what we'll do is use... This copper, this is some leftover copper that I got from whenever I built the welding table. These are the two pieces I had left that Tom had given me. And I think we'll use these to make our, our jaws there. We'll put some brass soft jaws on it. And it's going to be really close on this moving jaw. We might have to mill just a little of this off. But the fixed jaw, there's plenty of room on that shelf there for that to fit. And we'll have to mill them down a little. So that's the plan. I think that's a good little project for us to do right here. And we'll give you some shots along the way as we uh, tear this thing apart and get her cleaned up, okay? Alright, I, I think I forgot to show you. So this is a completely swiveling vise here. So you've got your regular vise jaws here, and then we've got some pipe jaws here. And then you've got some uh, on this plane right here, so you could hold something in there vertically that's uh, round and whatnot, okay? And I know that it tightens whenever you tighten it up, it squeezes it and keeps it from rotating. So this looks like a nut here that's bolted on. We've got a cotter pin and then a nut here. So we'll go ahead and start taking this apart. See if we can get it get it out of there, alright? There's our cotter pin. Give it a little bit of loose juice right here. Okay. All right, looks like the screw is just going to go ahead and screw on out of here. Yep, okay. So there's our screw. Doesn't look bad, just needs cleaning. And I believe this will slide out now. Okay. All right, so there's the moving jaw. Now the rest of it, Got to figure it out here. Okay. There it is. Okay, pretty simple. Oh yeah. All right. So there's our what I would consider a fixed jaw, even though it swivels. So I want to finish taking all this apart, get get that bolt out. We want to get these bolts out and take the jaws out. And same way on this jaw, I want to get these bolts out right here. Those, we'll go back with some different bolts. Those don't look cool enough. All right, then we got to get our, uh, <clears throat> the body here 
separate it also. And it just needs a little bit of movement here on these screws. trying not to get a bunch of oil and uh, lubricant on it because uh, I don't like that stuff in my blast cabinet and it's less cleaning that I have to do. See, I think it'll all I think it'll all come apart though. Yeah, alright, so I just need to unscrew these and then this little piece will come off right here. Take these little bolts out. And this is all going to be metric stuff. This is a made in China vise here. Will said that it come from big lots. And he's had it a long time so this thing's been around for a while. Might need a little persuasion. Okay, that was easy enough. I'm just going to get a screwdriver for that one. These I'll see about replacing, maybe if, if I can get them some uh, socket head uh, bolts there, cap, uh, flat heads. All right, there's that one. All right. Oh, man. All right, we got it all apart, and I'm going to go ahead and start bead blasting, and uh, we'll, we'll show you a couple clips of the blasting again. The screw and this piece with the, the nut made into it. I'm going to see about doing some soaking. I'm going to get one of my pans out and put a little degreaser in it. And uh, probably use my, uh, my Zep Industrial Purple Cleaner. <laughs> and we'll uh, soak those for a day and then rinse them off so we can get some of that dried up grease off of them. And the rest of them are good and dry and rusty, which that blast cabinet does a good job at. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and start cleaning them up. We'll get them all cleaned up and then I'll try to figure out what we're going to do here on this jaw that we got to repair. There's a good look inside the cabinet there. You see it's uh, nice and big, got plenty of room. And the switch is on up here. First few pieces done. I think that'll, I think that'll be, oh, I got a little bit right there. Let's see if I can get that off there. Base, lock nut for the base. First few pieces, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the rest of them. By the way, this, uh, this glass 
it's got a that's a plastic screen protector for the glass right there and i cannot find what i did with the rest of these things i need to buy some more from trinco and uh it's really hard to see through here so i'm having to look through this side because it's clearer over here than on that side All right, we got most of our parts blasted. I've got my Zep Purple Cleaner uh, over right here, and we're gonna soak the screw, and then this nut right here, it's got grease down inside of that, so I'm gonna drop that down in there, and uh, we're gonna let that soak for a day. I'll check it tomorrow. Uh, I still got to blast these jaws. I haven't got to them yet, but uh, we'll get to them next. So, well on our way to uh, refurbishing this little, this little cheap vise. So here's the repair, the, the part that we're going to do some repair on. So this will be your moving jaw. And there's a there's a closer look of the, <clears throat> the holes. Now this one probably still be usable right here, but this one's blown out. It's, uh, you know, chipped out of there. So what I want to do is grind this out a little bit, kind of V this, v this out. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that yet. We might just do, do a chamfer right here. I want to braise this up braise that up and i'm probably going to run a little bit of braise across the top right here and once we do that we're going to set it here in the k and t and i'm going to mill this i'm going to mill all this nice and square i'm probably going to mill this this surface here down a little bit uh, just so that it's not hanging out there so far and then we'll make a cut, a light cut, just to clean this up across the top right there, okay? And then once we do that, we'll find the center, and we'll come in here, and we're just going to, uh, I'm not going to follow these holes here. I'm going to come out here, and here and here, and we'll re-drill and tap two new holes for our, our copper jaw. And we're going to do that in the KNT right here, okay?
to blend this first hole in here. Okay, this side here, I, I didn't like the way that had flowed, so I had uh, dressed it and built it back up with uh, this rod right here. It's doing real good flowing in there, so I think we got it where we need it just to create a, a base metal there. And what I'm doing is just dressing it down with this uh, grinder just so there ain't a bunch of metal hanging up there. Okay, I think that'll, that'll be good enough there to uh, go to the milling machine and then we'll make some milling cuts on there to clean everything up nice and square. Alright, so next up is the K&T. Alright, I right. we're setting up in the K&T. So I removed all the horizontal setup up here, got the overarm slid back. I moved the curved vise around 90 degrees and what I'm doing is I'm setting up this jaw that's in line, it's gonna be lying parallel with the spindle right here. And I think I've got a tool set up that's gonna work just fine for this. All right, this is a, this is a one inch holder right here. And I don't remember who give this, somebody give this to me. And I do have this drill chuck also that's got the one inch shank on it and I think it's going to be just right for putting in here and reaching across to do our drill our holes okay and also we'll be able to use this I'll put a mill in there and we'll be able to come across here and mill this jaw nice and square all right so the first thing I want to do I, I have just just very lightly clamped I want to do a little bit of indicating. I want to run the indicator across the top of this right here and make sure it's level. And then I also want to indicate it right here and make sure it's you know level up that way. And it's just a casting, rough machine casting, so it ain't got to be perfect. So uh, we'll get an indicator up here and we'll start doing some sweeping, okay? I will show you this real quick. What I'm using are some of my, uh, the uh, Starrett Toolmaker V blocks. It's got the rod that goes between them and holds them together. Uh, these were my granddad's that have come out of his toolbox there and worked out real good for holding this piece in the vise right here. Okay. Do a quick sweep, see what we see here.
not very tight at all yet, so put just a little bit on it there. position and we'll uh, check this right here. That's just eyeball man. I didn't indicate that until just now. Wow. Okay. I want to be careful. I'm sure that's all cast iron because it's all one solid piece. I don't want to put too much pressure on there and risk cracking that thing or breaking it because I don't trust that stuff too much, man. All right. 